Today on Fresno State Focus, we'll take you behind the scenes of the busy setup for this annual's 50th Vintage Days. Also, the Filipino culture prepares for their upcoming show. Plus, have you wondered where all of Fresno State's building names come from? We'll take you around campus and find out. Fresno State Focus starts now. Hello and welcome to Fresno State Focus. I'm David Victor. And I'm Ador Berzamina. The Collegian's latest issue of the paw print is out today. For the past few weeks, Collegian staff has been working all hours of the day and sometimes deep into the night to get the print into our paws. Editor-in-Chief Giselle Cardenas it described working until 4 or 5 in the morning sometimes. She and other staff go over all of the content and make sure everything looks good from front to back before it gets printed. I think production night is always a challenge in itself because there's just a lot to do in a little bit of time. The paw print can be found in the newspaper bins around campus and the Collegian office or the Speech Arts Building or online at fs.collegian.com. The 50th annual Vintage Days is back at Fresno State. The three-day festivities are set to take place this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Like last year, there will be food, rides, live music, performances, a crafts fair, an anime gaming con, a beer and wine garden, as well as a kids zone. Vintage Days is upping the ante this year with a birthday block party on Saturday night and even a drone show. Admission and parking are free. Caesar Maya is out there right now to catch the setup. Caesar? Hey guys, here we are at what's going to be the concert setup for Vintage Days. And here I am with Aiden Brown, a coordinator for Vintage Days. Aiden, can you tell us a little bit about Vintage Days? Yeah, so Vintage Days is going to be taking place this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on April 19th through the 21st. Right out here, we're south. We're in the south lawn of the Resnick Student Union. Uh, Vintage Days is going to be taking place out here in parking lots P30 and P31, so from the RSU all the way to the dorms. And there's a lot of fun stuff happening at Vintage Days, right? So we have like our anime gaming con in the RSU. We have our crafts fair. We have our boom town with all of our clubs and orgs who are selling food and have food and games. Uh, we have our kids zone with a lot of fun stuff happening for the kids in that area. Um, and yeah, and then we have like our performances out here in our concerts stage. Um, yeah, so a lot of fun stuff. There's something for everyone out here. And I've heard about the drone show you guys are doing. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, so the drone show is going to be taking place on Saturday night from 7 to 10 p.m. It's at our birthday block party event celebrating 50 years. It's going to be taking place right here on the south lawn of the RSU. And the drone show featuring Sky Dreams drone light show should be taking place at uh, 8.40 p.m. So we'll have our uh, Fresno State's first ever drone show. And then as you can see, we're both wearing the Vintage Days hats. Yes. Can you tell us where people can find them? Um, honestly... That is something I don't quite know yet. Um, we have like a limited amount, so I really want to say it's kind of first come, first serve at Vintage Days. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Aiden. Thank you. All right. Here we are. What will be the setup for Vintage Days, or what is the setup for Vintage Days? Caesar Meyer, Fresno State Focus. Hey, thank you, Caesar. Shout out the bucket hat. But that's not the only thing going on this weekend. Science and Mathematics is having a carnival on Saturday. Students and staffs will be using props to demonstrate natural events like earthquakes, how wells work, and getting close-ups on rocks. Here, the Earth and Marble Science Department will be showing off of various uh, things that we use in our own departments and just for um, showing the natural cycles that exist on the Earth. The Science and Mathematics Carnival is happening Saturday from noon to four between the Science 2 building and the Planetarium. Rose, Conley, and Joyle. These are just some of the names found on our buildings around campus. Rene Rodriguez tells us why these names and many others are important to Fresno State. Students walk past these buildings every day. They see names like Resnick, but do they know who the Resnicks are? No, actually I really don't. I transferred this semester, so I have no idea who these people are. I kind of just like walk through the building not knowing any of them, I kind of just sit around. I see it all the time, and I obviously know that they have some important meaning. Some buildings date back 50 to 60 years, like the Gross Building, named after industrial arts teacher Marion Gross. The Conley Art Building was named after philanthropist Phoebe McClatchy Briggs Conley. 
a member of the CSU Board of Trustees. This building where some of our MCJ classes take place and where faculty offices can be found is named none other than after Donald McKee Fisk, who was a professor and the head of the School of Business. I think it's important to know who these people were. Fresno State President Saul Jimenez Sandoval helps us understand who gets an honor like this. So they were foundational to how Fresno State becomes this powerhouse university in the region. Well, there's actually two types of individuals that have names, buildings named after them on campus. One would be more on the administrative side, like a President Joyelle, who's our administration building, who was a longtime president here, had a significant impact. Philanthropic partners are also honored with building names. The TV studio where we produce our newscasts is named after Professor Merlin Burris. His generous donations provided us with the Burris Studio and Burris Scholarship. Scholarship. At Fresno State, Rene Rodriguez, Fresno State Focus. Next time you walk around campus and see a name on a building, know that the namesake made a positive impact on Fresno State. Speaking of names and buildings, the Craig School of Business has a new classroom at Campus Point. Fresno State continues to expand, and this classroom next to the Kennel Bookstore is a versatile and unique space for students. It can be used for more than just classes because the uh, furnitures are mov movable, uh, they're mobile, so you can uh, make space for a banquet, uh, for a social mixer, um, you know, informal cafe, you know, whatever you like. Right now, this room is used exclusively by graduate students. In the future, they hope to use the space for more executive meetings, conferences, seminars, or workshops. We can finally breathe now that tax season is over. The Craig School of Businesses was a big help to taxpayers again this year. The final day of the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, VITA, took place last Sunday. This program helps Fresno State students do their taxes with the help of finance professionals for both English and non-English speaking students. We do offer um, help with uh, Spanish speakers too, as well. If you're someone who don't have a translator, we do have students here that are bilingual in Spanish and English, also Hmong as well. Students had to bring a photo ID, their social security number, and a cell phone. If you are someone who needs financial help in other areas, you can call 559-281-0128 to schedule an appointment with a financial tutor on campus. The Makaisa Filipino Club at Fresno State is having its 50th Filipino Culture Night. I got to see them get footloose and would like to show you how they prepare for this club tradition. Filipino Culture Night is where Filipino culture is showcased through dancing and acting. Floris Oripon, best known as Auntie, helps teach the dances and the meaning behind them. Students end up connecting with the culture in ways they wouldn't expect. It's actually being more immersed, just like myself and like learning more about my culture. Crystal, who's your partner? Valentine. They practice three times a week from five to nine at night, going over their parts for the performance. With so many dances to learn and memorize, good time management is a must. One of the club's officers, Christian Rana, knows well about time management. He not only helps to run the club, but is also a full-time student. Because in the beginning it was hard with balancing school and stuff like that. For some students, it comes down to simple compartmentalization. So it's always homework before PCN, so I make sure I finish all that before coming to practice. And I separate learning PCN and, and my actual schoolwork. This year's PCN will feature over 15 dances and a play titled Uwian meaning to return home or homecoming. With most of the club's members being health or chemistry majors, taking care of the performance in the classroom is just as important as on stage. I do have like a certain balance with it, even though it doesn't seem like it, but I do, I'm able, I'm able to balance it pretty well. Makaisa is Tagalog for United as One, and this year's 50th Filipino Culture Night shows why this is true. When I asked how they are able to balance such busy schedules, the common denominator was knowing priorities. For more info on the Filipino Culture Night or the Makaisa Filipino Club, follow at Makaisa Filipino Club. FSR Underground plays our favorite alternative music. It also plays a podcast created by a Fresno State staff member. Artful Disclosure is a weekly radio show turned podcast created by arts and humanities communication specialist Benjamin Kirk. 
He finds out what College of Arts and Humanities students and faculty are up to each week. Then he does live or pre-recorded interviews with them. He hopes to inform people about what goes on around campus. We have hundreds of events every semester and so just, just the events keeps us busy, but not only that, there's the research, there's the scholarship, there's amazing students that come through. You can listen to the show on FSR Underground Monday mornings at 10. You can also check it out wherever you stream your podcasts. Coming up on Fresno State Focus, we'll throw you a bone on the Battle of the Ribs. And then we'll show you how to clean up the mess. Plus, I'll have your focus on weather when we come back from the break. I got the ball that's spirit. Up in my head. Up in my head. Up in my head. I got that ball that's spirit. Up in my head. Up in my head to say. Deep in my heart to stay. I got that bulldog spirit. Down in my toes. Down in my toes. Down in my toes. I got that bulldog spirit. Down in my toes. Hey. Down in my toes to stay. I got that bulldog spirit. Deep in my heart. Deep in my heart. Deep in my heart. I've got that bulldog spirit. Hello, I'm Jimena Ramos with your focus on weather. Behind me is a view from the new RSU from the third floor. And on the street side, Saturday and Sunday and Friday, there will be vintage days in parking lot P31 and P32. Moving on to our weather in our national satellite. Along the East Coast, there's a decent amount of rain flowing through the Midwest as well. On our Western satellite, what will be the biggest influencer for the week? It's the area of high pressure continuing to expand off the West Coast, pushing temps to the 80s. Also, there will be slight clouds coming in. Today's highs will be in the upper 70s Closer to Fresno, we'll be looking towards lower 80s. The trend will continue with our tomorrow's lows with high, I mean, moderate 50s, and closer to Fresno will be 55. For our air quality, our air quality will be ideal for most individuals. In our extended outlook, if you have weekend outdoor plans this time around, I mean, from last weekend's recap, there was wet and cooler, non-average weather, but that will not be the case this weekend. Lower 80s to our upper 70s for the weekend ahead. Near average highs and the occasional clouds will be here. That's all I have for you today. That was your focus on weather. Back to you, David. Thank you, Jimena. O.J. Simpson collectibles are flying off shelves nationwide after his death last week. Cards. Photos and other souvenirs of the NFL Hall of Famer are in high demand as, and selling quickly. Getting one of these in Fresno or Clovis seems to be out of the question. I asked more than 10 sports collectible shops if they have any in stock. Not one of them has an item with O.J. Simpson's name on it. Why? I was told there was no interest here. Also, the owner of the JR Sports Collectibles told me he refused to sell O.J. collectibles because of O.J.'s reputation. On Saturday, barbecue lovers from across Fresno welcomed the Battle of the Ribs. The contest attracted barbecue competitors from across the state, with all of them trying to prove who has the best meat. Cont contestants competed to place top three for a cash prize. Some vendors came out to meet the community and get their name out. Meeting people? Yeah, it's, it's a good way to, uh, to, to, to talk to the community, let them know that you're here, but then we also like it talking to the community and everything, so it makes it plus plus. The event had its own private judges. For $30, a lot of people paid to taste and judge for themselves. This ticket allowed barbecue lovers to try ribs from 15 different vendors and cast their votes.
In a locked room on the bottom floor of the USU are two sleeping pods. They have not been used in years, but could soon be making a comeback. Caesar Maya looks into the possibility of a return for the pods and a potential new location. With all the hustle and bustle of walking around campus, trying to get your work done and extracurricular activities, it's easy to want to take a break. I wish I could just lay down for like at least one of the hours that I have free. Years ago, sleeping pods were installed in the USU recharge zone for students to take a break while on campus. Nowadays, many students don't even know where they are. You can still find the sleeping pods at the bottom of the USU, right next to the bowling alley, and they've been closed since COVID. And as you can see, if you take a quick peek, there are still in there just some white pods where you can um, hopefully take a nap. ASI Vice President of Finance, Guadalupe Zamurio Teas, has been working to bring the sleeping pods back. We definitely want to do take the right steps, make sure that we have the right information so we can get them up and running as quickly as possible. Zamurio Teas says they still don't know where the pods will end up. We also had the ideas of maybe relocating them to a different parts of campus to either like the rec center or the business um, school since we felt like they were to be utilized a little bit more. MCJ major Jacqueline Carrillo says that even though she's graduating, she thinks having the sleeping pods would be great for a lot of students. I don't know if I'll be able to enjoy it as much, but I think just the pods itself would be uh, fun because I usually just put your headphones on and put some brown noise or something, you know? So I think that would be enough for me. The initiative to bring the sleeping pods back is still in early development, but students should be on the lookout. Reporting from the USU, Cesar Maya, Fresno State Focus. There is no reopening date for the pods, but keep an eye out on social media for, the, for ASI's media social pages for more info. Fresno State custodians can only do so much to keep the campus clean. Natalia Mendoza shows us how students can do their part too. 19,240 students attend Fresno State this semester. And there are about 10 custodians who work to keep the campus clean. On a busy day, oh, it could be anywhere from like 15, 20, 30. Um, those are trips to the uh, dumpster and then we come back and to make it clean. But walk around campus and you'll see plenty of places where people are far from clean. On the ground, outside the RSU, under the trees, by the USU, and now in grad season, confetti is a common sight as people take their graduation pictures and don't pick up after themselves. All of this must be picked up by custodians if no one else does. Sometimes we get uh, in the garbage, they're like, uh, it seems like people take a drink of their tall coffee and they throw it in the trash and then it kind of, when we try to pick it up, there's like liquid everywhere. I'm standing here in one of the most busiest walkways where you can see we have eight trash cans lined up and it's hard not to throw away your trash. It's common sense. I think, you know, when they see some trash on the ground, I think they should just pick it up and just take it to the nearest trash can. So like, I think most of the time it's clean. I've never had any issues of seeing it dirty. Um, I mean, maybe there's sometimes it could look a little bit more nicer. With all of the construction clearing up, the campus is starting to look cleaner. Just because the fences and machinery are coming down. Construction and like the constant like fences and stuff, but um, honestly it's worth it because our campus does like end up looking a lot better. There's a lot like better landscape and like the plants look really good. So, I mean, it would help if like people don't throw their trash on the ground. The next time you throw away your trash, think twice about where you throw it. The gray bins mean trash, blue bins mean recycle. And when you see a green one, it's for organics. On the Fresno State campus, Natalia Mendoza, Fresno State Focus. And remember to not mix your trash when throwing it away. Fresno State Focus has been busy at work behind the scenes on a new feature series about mental health. Emily Crabtree is here now with more. Adore, Fresno State Focus has been busy at work behind the scenes on a new feature series about mental health. Mental health can be a sensitive topic, but it's still important to shed light on. In our upcoming series on FresnoStateFocus.com, we talked with students around campus about their journey with mental health and what it means to them. I think COVID kind of, the COVID pandemic and being online in school kind of messed me up. Jason Bishop is tuned into his mental health. It, I got back to school and I had no social aspects. And I was always known for talking, but my social, my social way of 
life just boom. The students that we interviewed for this series come from all walks of life and they have many different ways of healing from dancing to exercising to reading. There's a lot of different ways that people choose to heal. And I unpack this a lot in my dancing. Um, it's been my healing journey. Um, they allow me to um, play with my craft. Sarah was in the military. She says a lot of her trauma comes from her service. We also interviewed athletes and international students for the series. They talked with us in hopes that their stories could potentially help others going through the same thing. Once you like realize you did the first step on your own, it gets so much easier and you feel like just there's like a whole like weight off your back. Jason's salvation is the Black Student Union. The BSU, people in the BSU, I'm not at the BSU meetings all the time, but I know where to find people. I know where to find um, the counselors. I know where to, you know, I know where to find everybody if I need to talk about something. And our Mental Health Solutions Journalism series will be posted on FresnoStateFocus.com. These stories will share different perspectives on mental health and also, also offer solutions and resources on campus where students can go for help. Back to you. Coming up, we show you what goes on behind the scenes of Fresno State Focus. Plus, what is happening with the night sky this weekend? Find out on what's in the stars after the break. Here in the valley, our colors are blue and our waves are red. Bulldog born and Bulldog bred. Generations linked forever by traditions that have stood the test of time. Inside our stadiums, we are one. This is our valley. And this year, we're doing it for you. At Fresno State, being bold means committing to something greater than yourself. It's learning by doing and nurturing leaders to advance our shared future. It's using research to create a better life for those around us and healing those who need us most. These are our stories because at Fresno State, bold begins here. I'm Natalia Mendoza with your focus on sports. Women's golf is currently playing day two of the Mountain West Championship in Rancho Mirage. After day one, Fresno State was sitting in fourth place after going five over as a team. On the individual side of the championship, freshman Sophia Chen found her stride in opening round going three under on the day. That placed her in third place, just two strokes behind San Jose State's Lucia Lopez, Ortega, who is in first place. Fresno State baseball is an unusual spot after last night's game in Los Angeles. The Diamond Dogs lost to the, to the Lions of LMU 10-4. Fresno State had 3-4 lead heading into the bottom of the eighth inning, but then the Lions got seven runs. Loyola Marymount is the only team to beat Fresno State twice this season. Next time the Bulldogs play, it will be back home at Bob Bennett Stadium for a three-game series against the Spartans, who the Dogs had previously beat in a 2-1 series. Before the game, the team will honor the legacy of Bob Bennett. Bennett coached the baseball team for 32 years, leading teams to the College World Series in 1988 and 1991. Meanwhile, across the street, the softball team will be honoring our furry companions as they will host Bark in the Park. The women's judo team won the national title, making history 34 years ago. The team traveled to Texas A&M to compete in the National Collegiate Judo Championship. The women's novice team brought home some hardware. They placed second in the tournament. Two fighters secured their spot at the World University Games next year in Germany, putting Fresno State on the map. Go Bulldogs! Fresno State football is preparing for the spring preview on April 27th, next Saturday, but the team is continuing to add key pieces to the next year's lineup. It was announced on X yesterday that San Jose State offensive lineman Jake Steele will be transferring to Fresno State. The six foot four freshman could become an asset in the trenches and protect returning quarterback Mikey King. With the WNBA season coming to an end, the WNBA is just a month away. The WNBA draft class walked on the orange carpet with some serious drip. 
But that wasn't all. According to Athletic, this year's WNBA draft had nearly 2.5 million viewers. The first pick of the WNBA draft was Kaylin Clark, who is one of the best female college basketball players and now will play with the Indiana Fever. Cameron Brink was the second overall pick, and this is what she had to say on the women before her. I know people keep saying it's a historic draft class, but I think we need to look back at the draft class before us as well because they're the women we grew up watching. So, you know, we do it for them. They're the Angel Reese and Camila Cardoso, national champions, will team up and play you know, for the, the Chicago Sky. Really so much talent this year's draft class is going to be a historic season for the WNBA. And that was your focus on sports. Back to you guys. Thanks, Natalia. All semester, we've been bringing you the news here on Fresno State Focus. And we could not do this without the people behind the scenes. Ray Franco gives us an inside look at our production crew. You see us live on your screen every Wednesday. Welcome to Fresno State Focus. I'm Humana Ramos. And I'm Cesar Maya. Or every Monday. I'm Ricky Oaks. I'm Al Scott. And I'm Ray Franco. Thank you for joining us. These students are the only ones who make these things happen. This is a class where MCJ students get a chance to learn uh, how to run a live newscast behind the scenes. So MCJ 123 offers a variety of hands-on experience, such as being a cameraman, prompter, audio operator, graphics operator, and lastly, a director. Ready DDR? Take DDR. I really like the back-end production stuff of broadcasts, and this is like absolutely invaluable experience in that regard. So yeah, this is like massive for my future career. This is much more than just a class. And I really enjoyed doing it. It was honestly doing crew was the whole reason why I even joined MCJ because I really wanted to join the production side and getting an opportunity to just getting my hands dirty and getting my hands on the camera is so much fun. Literally anyone can join this class. My class, MCJ 123, is open to all students. You don't need to be an MCJ major. Um, it's not a required class, but it is a really fun class. For more information about this class, head to our website, FresnoStateFocus.com. Reporting in Speech Arts Building, Ray Franco, Fresno State Focus. We have some exciting things happening in the sky this week. Last week we had the solar eclipse, and this week we have the Lyrids meteor shower happening around the world on Saturday. The Central Valley Astronomers Club comes to River Park once a month to look into space. The club held a star watch party at the River Park Plaza last Friday. Everyone was welcome to look into the telescopes. Longtime club member Alan England says you are able to see different galaxies and planets during these events. So we can look at galaxies and clusters and you know all the neat stuff. But out here, we love to share share the moon and whatever plants are visible. The Astronomers Club always welcomes new members. No equipment or experience is needed, and it is free to participate. You can find more information on their website at cvafresno.org. So, Dor, what are you? Can you see any stars with those binoculars? Oh man, can you? Um, come on, give them to me. I'm gonna have to take my glasses off for this. I think I'm gonna need some bigger ones. Oh, geez. Yeah, probably. No, this one. I mean, we're I, the only thing I see are just a bunch of lights here in the studio. There's no way we're gonna see stars at all. <laughs> Good thing they got plenty at the places that we're supposed to got, got telescopes, right? It would definitely help if I had some that accommodate to my glasses. But you know, it's one of those. I would. I mean, I would have to switch into my contacts. But yeah. Hey, that's all we have. See you in the stars for next week. Next week on Fresno State Focus, we look at how vending machines on campus are selling expired food and drinks. Plus, a look at the new Fresno Hop Trolley and how it helps the community. Also, we have a recap of Vintage Days. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next week.